Uh, hello. Well, I'm um, sorry I got cut off just now because um, you know the video, um, uh, the, the the video, uh, the, no, no, there was not enough memory space in the camera. But I'm back. Okay. Um, let's pick up uh, where we left off. Uh, it's really funny that I was in the middle of talking about anxiety in the face of uh, death, and then you know, and then I got cut off. Um, it tells us something about the nature of the. Um, impermanence of existence. Um, any, anyway, uh, let's try to pick up uh, where I left off. So as I was saying, you know, anxiety is ultimately, well, it's anxiety in the face of being in a world, and anxiety in the face of being in a world is anxiety in the face of no longer, well, let me put this again, sorry. Anxiety in the face of being in a world is actually anxiety at the prospect of no longer being in a world. In other words, Heidegger would say that ultimately all anxiety is ultimately is ultimately anxiety in the face of our impending demise. It is anxiety in the face of death, of our own death, not just the death of anybody else. Um, so, so if you run away from anxiety in everyday life, you are in a sense actually running away from death. Um, it's a little bit sobering and a little bit depressing, perhaps, to uh, to to think of these things. But um, you know, the, the more you think about this, the more there is a certain truth uh, to the, the to this uh, to this entire story. Um, so, uh, so and Heidegger would say that uh, most of our everyday life uh, is actually in a, is actually inauthentic, because uh, most of our most of our everyday life is actually designed. To fill our to fill our day with activities that you know that make us think not not think so much about death. Um, you know, you go to maybe you you hang out with your friends or you go to parties and you know, Thanksgiving is next week, so you go to Thanksgiving dinner. You don't talk about death uh, when you are with your friends or at, with your family or at, at dinner because well because it's kind of a depressing thing to talk about. Um, it probably makes you unpopular if you talk about it too much. Um, or at all, um, so most of us just kind of you know glaze over, kind of gloss over it, and then move on to something else. So if we learn that somebody just died, we will say, oh, that's too bad. I'm so sorry that that person has died. Um, and then you know you say something like this um, to show that you care, and then you move on to something else. Um, so the default mode of everyday existence is to, you know, is to turn away from death. Because it's uh, it's too angst-producing, it's too anxiety-provoking to even think about it. Um, so, and so this is what Heidegger is, uh, was is saying. Um, you know, um, for the most part, um, our everyday life is preoccupied with activities that allow us to flee, to flee or to run away from from this anxiety, and he calls this inauthentic being towards death. Um, he also calls this attitude of fleeing or running away a state of falling. Um, uh, you know, to, to understand what he means by falling, think of it, there is a certain religious uh, connotation to this. Uh, you know, think about falling in terms of the fall from grace, in terms of the, you know, fall, fall from grace of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Uh, yeah, and so there is a sense in which um, you know, in fleeing and running away from this anxiety provoked by death, you are actually we are actually in a state of falling, in a state of fallenness. We we are in that state of fallenness because we uh, we are not living. Um, we are not in a state of being that is as authentic as it could be. We are we are we are not being as authentic in our lives as we could be. Um, so. So given that most of our everyday uh, life uh, is spent in a state of fleeing or running away or falling, uh, what would an authentic way of facing death be like? Um, well, um, Heidegger does give some interesting, uh, you know, uh, he gives some interesting clues to this question, um, but uh, but he doesn't go into that much detail. Uh, but there are some interesting details that uh, some interesting points that he brings up anyway. Um, and actually, if you think about it, um, if you understand what it is to be um, uh, to be inauthentic in the face of death, then you could. Then I think we can also understand 
even if only vaguely, uh, what it is like to be authentic in the face of death. Because remember that to be authentic is, I'm sorry, to be inauthentic is to run away in the face of, uh, in the face of anxiety. Um, so the opposite of that must mean that if you are to be authentic, you must be in a state of anxiety. That sounds depressing. Um, well, not just be in a state of anxiety, but be in a state of be in a state where you are always open to the anxiety, and you are able to you know live with the anxiety, uh, see that anxiety as giving you a sense of freedom um, that you otherwise would not have before. Heidegger calls this a state of anticipation. So you are you are in a state uh, to be authentic is to be, is to live in a state where you are always anticipating death. Uh, where you are always in a constant state of anxious freedom. Um, but to do this, to live like this, is not the same as being morbid. Um, you know, um, you don't obsess over death, because if you obsess over death, if you are morbid, then there's a sense in which, you know, if you are being morbid, you are actually being inauthentic. Because if you are being morbid, then now you are treating death as this fetish, as this, you know, uh, as this object to be uh, uh, to be obsessed over like a mathematical problem, um, uh, but this uh, to to be authentic is nothing like that. It is not to be morbid. Rather, it is to be in a state where you know that your life can end at any time. Um, it is to be in a state where you know that you are free because you recognize that your life can end at any time, and this freedom gives you the power, um, the ability to. Uh, to enjoy, uh, to enjoy and live every moment fully, um, and to, you know, and, and to, uh, to to have uh, no fear of uh, what is coming, because you are always in this state of constant anxious anticipation of death. So you're not really looking forward to death, but you're not running away from it either. You live, and you live in a state of total anxious freedom. Um, now, if all of this sounds really abstract, uh, here's something that might be helpful. Uh, for this week, I've actually posted a brief video of um, uh, of some Tibetan monks making a Zen mandala, um, and they did, you know, they built the Zen mandala over the course of a few days. So um, usually, uh, when a when a bunch of Tibetan monks get together to build this Zen mandala, you know, they use sand of many many colors uh, to build this really really beautiful uh, um, and very detailed picture on the tabletop. Um, so they pay a lot of painstaking uh, attention, they put a lot of painstaking detail into rendering every part of the picture as vivid and as um, lifelike as it could be. And that, that the entire process of making the mandala from pieces of, you know, from, um, from many many grains of colored sand usually takes a few days. And then guess what happens at the end of those few days? they destroy the sand mandala. They just, uh, you know, wipe away the entire mandala. They wipe the entire man picture out of existence. And, and then, and it's like the picture was never there in the first place. So, um, I, I thought that the, I, the, this example of the sand mandala is actually a good uh, way to think about uh, Heidegger's views of, uh, of having an authentic, um, you know, posture towards death. Because you, um, just like when you are building the sand mandala, just like when you are building this colorful picture made out of sand, uh, you devote every single moment to building it. You, uh, you devote every single ounce of your being to building it. Um, you take it very, very seriously. Um, it's like you are creating a great, work, a great work of art, which you are. Um, and then you, but then at the end of it, you just destroy the whole thing. And so you know that everything is impermanent, and yet you are, you delight in the moment-to-moment -moment nature of life. So it is to delight in the temporary nature of everything, and yet still be okay with the idea that everything is going to pass eventually. Um, and I believe that this is uh, this idea, this attitude of uh, delighting in every single fleeting moment, delighting in all the delights and pains that every single moment has to offer and yet still being okay with the fact that everything is going to end eventually uh, I think this attitude is probably the closest thing that, um, that, that, I, that we can think of 
to this idea of uh, to Heidegger's idea of having an authentic attitude towards life. So um, um, yeah, so so do 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 contemplate this as you you know work on your quiz as you go into your Thanksgiving holidays. Uh, hopefully, this wouldn't make your Thanksgiving holiday uh, too depressing. Um, and also, please take some time to watch that um, video of the Tibetan monks doing the building the making a sand mandala that I posted on this week's Moodle site. Um, it's only about three minutes or two minutes long, so it's not going to take too much of your time, and it's probably go it will probably be a, an entertaining you know diversion um, in the course of all this um, philosophy. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. Bye.